When some people think of 3D printing, they probably think of things like this. This is a gear cube. It's been scaled up a little ways, but it's basically just a useless desk toy. Now, usually on this channel, when I utilize 3D printing, I will be making something along the lines of a project enclosure. And using 3D printing, you can make some really cool project enclosures that look good and work flawlessly for whatever application you're trying to do, assuming you're good with uh, CAD modeling. But today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be trying to push the limit of this technology. So what I have here in front of me today is a Traxxas RC car with a broken spur gear. So this is a 48 pitch, 90 tooth spur gear. And one of the teeth got sheared off of this guy. So what we're gonna try to do is replace this gear with this gear. So I've made a relatively rough CAD drawing of the Traxxas gear and I've printed it out and I've ended up with this. And I'm thinking that it's going to be close enough to where it should work in this truck. The question is, will it be strong enough to hold up to the forces that one of these motors can put out? In order to make this gear, I went ahead and did it in Fusion 360 and it's fairly simple to do. You just go into the tools menu, go down to add-ins, scripts and add-ins, and then go find the spur gear add-in. There are quite a few different settings here. The first of which is the pressure angle, which from what I found on the internet, these Traxxas gears either use a 14 and a half degree pressure angle or a 20 degree pressure angle. And it seems like 14 and a half is a little bit more likely from what I've seen. Next thing is the pitch of the gear, which is conveniently printed right on the front of the gear and that is 48. And the number of teeth is also conveniently printed on the front of the gear. In my case, it's 90. I just left the backlash at zero. I changed the root fillet radius to be 0.01 just to get rid of that error message that was on the bottom. Measured the thickness of the gear as well as the diameter of the hole in the gear and went ahead and put those in as well. And the hole in these gears, as you probably saw, is quite large and it ends up housing the uh, slipper clutch of the vehicle. But after you get everything put in, you click on the OK button and it takes it a second, but you end up with a fairly nice pre-configured gear. After this, I began trying to model the rest of the gear to look as much like the Traxxas one as possible, but I didn't make it completely perfect. My main focus was getting all the measurements correct, not getting it to look exactly the same as the Traxxas gear. And most of this was just simple drawing circles and things and just extruding them. So this didn't really take too much effort. One thing about the part that I'm making right now is that the little tabs that I just created are going to end up breaking off later in this video, or at least a lot of them ended up breaking off. Which is a little bit unfortunate, but I don't really think they serve that much of a functional purpose, so I'm not too worried about it. And one thing that I had a lot of issues with was attempting to get this thing to do a circular pattern. Because theoretically I should just be able to select that feature and have it revolve it around the axis and just end up with three of them which is what I need to make the gear right. But unfortunately, despite how many times I tried it and how many different ways I tried to get it to work, it would not work. It either ended up not doing anything, making my entire gear disappear, or crashing Fusion 360. So after a while I kind of gave up on that and decided to do a few more detailed parts of the gear to make it look a little bit more like the Traxxas one. I'm not entirely sure that these little slots in the gear have any functional purpose. My only thought was that they may be there for cooling that slipper clutch that I mentioned earlier. But I went ahead and added them anyway and you can see that is how the circular pattern tool is supposed to work. And here I ended up just redrawing by hand each one of the parts that I was trying to get the circular pattern tool to do for me, but I could never get it to work, so I ended up just giving up and doing it this way.
Watching this thing print was kind of interesting because it had to go through and do every individual one of these 90 teeth for every layer. So the printer ended up looking kind of funny as it was doing that, but it printed quite well, surprisingly. I didn't expect the gear teeth to come out as nice as they did, but it worked out pretty good. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing installed and uh, give it a test.
so we've now ran two battery packs through this truck using that 3D printed gear. I went ahead and pulled the cover off and the gear still looks more or less brand new. It's got just a little bit of wear right on the edges, which is kind of what I was expecting because the 3D printed part just isn't quite as accurate as the original part that was in the truck. So the gear teeth are just a little bit wider at the top than they should be. And that was wearing just ever so slightly. But really that gear still looks like it's in absolutely perfect condition. It's nothing that I wasn't expecting. And there's no reason why we can't continue to use that gear in this truck. One thing that I was really surprised about was just the fact that you really couldn't tell a difference that it was using a 3D printed gear. I was kind of expecting since the surface of that gear was kind of rough compared to the original one, because of course you have all the layers in the 3D print. I was expecting it to at least be noisier than a normal gear or make some extra noise, rattling, grinding sounds, something along those lines. But really, it runs just fine. It runs exactly like what a factory gear would do and it works just fine. But anyway, that does go to show you that you can use 3D printing for useful stuff and that gear will continue to be used in this truck until it eventually breaks and we'll just have to see how long it lasts. If you like this video, go ahead and click on that like button. If you want to see more from this channel, go ahead and click on the subscribe button down below. If you have any comments about this video or if you have any experience 3D printing functional parts of your own, go ahead and leave those down in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye.